We're here at KubeCon 2018 in Seattle, Washington, and I'm speaking with Pulumi. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're doing here at KubeCon? Sure, yeah, so we're, uh, we're Pulumi. Uh, we're a new startup uh, working on cloud native infrastructure as code. Uh, so we're really trying to bring uh, software engineering best practices into the infrastructure as code space. Let people sort of tame the complexity they're, they're growing as they embrace both uh, managed cloud solutions and Kubernetes. Um, really bring the, all the complexity of that and, and being able to bring it into a proper software engineering discipline. And so that means sort of letting people use real programming languages uh, to author their infrastructure as code. And so we support JavaScript and TypeScript and Python and Go and a variety of other languages uh, that are coming along. And so how do you fit into the Kubernetes ecosystem? Yeah, so we, you know, we plug on top of everything that Kubernetes offers, so the entire Kubernetes object model we expose into Pulumi. So from your Pulumi programs, you can orchestrate and deploy uh, any kind of Kubernetes application that you would have, both using the raw uh, Kubernetes object model and using things like Helm uh, to deploy those resources. But even more importantly, we then also allow you to combine that with managed cloud, and I think we're seeing a lot of organizations that are embracing both managed cloud, so they're doing some work on AWS, but also trying to use Kubernetes as the, as the control plane for the compute on that cloud. And so really trying to let them work with both of those using a single programming model is really powerful. We're seeing a lot of our customers trying to embrace both of those at the same time. Uh, so what would you say are the uh, specific problems that uh, Pulumi uh, solves for Kubernetes? Yeah, so I mean, there's a few things. I mean, one is uh, just giving you a better kind of authoring model for the way that you describe and manage your applications. And so instead of copying and pasting around YAML files and, and these, you know, letting that complexity grow by, by you know, creating tons and tons and tons of these files, I can now write that in a proper, you know, proper programming language. Like I can write that in TypeScript. I can get IDE tooling in my, in my editor. I can get type checking on the fly so I can find out about errors really quickly, improve that feedback loop. Uh, and more importantly, I can author sort of uh, reasonable abstractions at various different levels. So, you know, Kubernetes is growing the set of capabilities it has in its object model uh, fairly quickly, but oftentimes I want to actually express some component that's custom to my domain uh, that is, you know, maybe it's got some sidecars or it's got a few different Kubernetes resources, but I want to give a name to that pattern and I want to be able to reuse that as, as I would inside any part of my software. And so uh, Pulumi lets you do that and, and manage that as a sort of reliable thing. The second thing is we sort of give you a way of, when you're doing your deployments of your applications, really understanding the state of those deployments. Um, and so we sort of talk about is deployment orchestration versus sort of container orchestration. But when you're deploying into Kubernetes, oftentimes you don't want to just throw your YAML files at the Kubernetes object model um, and hope that they sort of uh, acquiesce to some, uh, some given state. You actually want to make sure that you know that you're going to deploy one thing and then once that has gotten to a certain state, you, you know that you're going to deploy another thing that depends on it. You want to be able to control those dependencies both inside Kubernetes and between Kubernetes and the cloud provider. And that's really what Pulumi kind of helps you with, is really managing uh, the, the reliable and uh, deployment of applications into Kubernetes, but also into the cloud in general. And uh, where would you say you see the industry going over the next 12 months or so? Yeah, I mean, well, obviously the adoption of Kubernetes has been huge, and we see a ton of increase in, in that adoption, both both in the practical adoption, but also in sort of folks using Kubernetes as a way to, uh, to get into the cloud and so as a sort of stepping stone thing towards, uh, towards cloud and as a way to abstract away some of the differences between uh, the, the, the underlying cloud platforms. And so clearly just adoption of Kubernetes is a huge trend um, and something that we've seen a lot of our users uh, kind of picking up Pulumi as part of their transition into Kubernetes. Another thing I'd say is the, the combination of Kubernetes plus cloud is something that doesn't get talked about as much but I think is increasingly interesting thing where folks are actually already using one of the major cloud platforms, AWS or Azure or GCP, um, but are trying to standardize their compute platform within those models um, onto Kubernetes as a way of having a very rich uh, control plane for their compute. Uh, and so that combination of wanting to use Kubernetes for custom compute, but also use all the rich managed services they're used to from AWS or Azure, like a managed data store or like managed uh, serverless capabilities, um, and being able to use both of those and having a single authoring model for the two of them is really something that we've seen a lot of our customers asking for and something that we've really been trying to uh, emphasize is something you can really do easily with Pulumi. And uh, would it be possible for us to see a demo of the product? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I'll hand over to, to Mark um, who will do a quick demo. I think he's going to show off a demo that kind of really highlights some of, the, some of this ability to use kind of the higher level uh, capabilities of Pulumi to express things in a really natural way. So not just work directly with the raw object model of, of Kubernetes or the cloud providers, but work at a higher level abstracted way that is really what you get once you can use higher level abstractions inside programming languages. And so Mark will show you kind of a video thumbnailer uh, app and how we can build that sort of thing and express that with Pulumi. Great. So what are you going to show us? 
Yeah, so we have a look at a quick, simple look at what Pulumi can do at a very high level to build a simple application. But it shows some of the sort of power of why uh, using real languages to build sort of cloud native infrastructure as code is, is important. So I'll uh, dive onto my screen and, uh, and show, you, show you the app we're going to build. Um, so, imagine for a second we're going to build something that's like a video thumbnail. Uh, so how does that app might look if I'm going to draw this on a whiteboard? It'd be something like this. Let me, let me take my video file, drop that into a bucket, whereupon a Lambda might you know, just see when that event happens, and then go launch a task. In this case, we want to extract a thumbnail from a uh, video, which is probably going to be a long-running task. We'll use uh, Amazon uh, Fargate to go execute a container, which, uh, which will which extract that thumbnail. When we get the thumbnail, we're going to drop that into, a, into the bucket once again, whereupon another lambda will be looking for that and will give us some kind of signal. So, pretty straightforward application, but has a number of moving parts. And in particular, has a number of different elements of the cloud here. So, we've got an S3 bucket, uh, we've got a, you know, serverless functions, and we've got a long running, running container task. Now, if you were to use a GUI or if you used to do declarative solutions for this, it gets pretty hard because many of the existing solutions out there don't cover all of these different aspects of cloud infrastructure. Uh, and equally, it can be hard to refer and, uh, and build an application which strings these together, things together uh, easily. Um, sure. But with Pulumi, we can just uh, express it almost as if you see it on the whiteboard. Um, so I'll flip over to VS Code. Uh, and what you're seeing is this entire application described in about 35, you know, 43 lines with comments uh, of code. And, I, and I'll, I'll walk it through kind of sort of top to bottom here. So very quickly, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is ask for uh, the library, uh, Pulumi the Cloud uh, AWS. What's interesting about Pulumi and the way we've written this code is it's actually multi-cloud. So you'll notice that I don't ask for S3, I ask for a bucket. Um, if I want, I could drop into the actual AWS providers and ask for S3 and, and optimize for that specifically. But this allows me to actually do uh, an AWS version of the application, but also point this at Azure, whereupon I wouldn't get an S3 bucket, I would get blob storage or whatever. So to start sure. with, at a very high level, I can achieve some multi-cloud capabilities. I can then get my bucket ID. Um, that's really great because again, if you're working with a programming language, it means I can take that bucket later on and get a reference to it and then inject the ID into my container task. These are things that look real simple in code when you're applying software engineering practices uh, to this sort of programming. Actually very difficult with the DSLs and, uh, uh, and techniques that are out there right now to stand up infrastructure. Then I go build a, uh, a cloud-running ta cloud task in the cloud. This is going to be based on an uh, FF MPEG uh, 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 Docker container. And in this case, instead of getting it from a registry like Docker Hub, I'm going to build it from a local Docker file, which is over here. Um, what I also get, uh, because I've got real programming languages here, is I've got things like uh, auto-completion. So you know, if I want to forget, then I've got memory reservations that I can call out, and I can uh, make sure I've got error checking, and so on and so forth, so I don't make any mistakes. And these things are uh, a big deal when it comes to um, uh, coding for the cloud, because many of the DSLs that are out there just simply don't do this sort of trapping for you. Sure. Then I attach uh, a Lambda function. So when uh, something gets put in this bucket, we're going to call this code. Now, Pulumi is smart enough to know that this code is going to get executed, and what we're really going to do here is just run the thumbnail task. Uh, but it's also smart enough to know that because I mark this as an event, it's going to, it's going to build a, uh, a Lambda function in the cloud for us to go execute that code within. So that's basically um, generating my thumbnail and dropping it in a bucket. And then another Lambda function at the bottom, which is well, when that, that JPEG itself arrives, then uh, go ahead and tell me it's there. So simple console log in this case. Then I can export the name of the bucket, which helps me dynamically link modules together and stacks together. So that's the code side of things. It's very powerful for developers. If I then uh, flip over to what does that look like when I go execute it, um, so if Pulumi's uh, command line, uh, in this case I'll do Pulumi uh, preview, will inspect that JS file and it will now create the uh, graph of cloud resources necessary to go build that app. So as you can see in the code, all we did was talk about buckets and containers and the higher level constructs. But the actual resulting output graph that I'm now going to poke the cloud with to generate these resources includes everything else I need. So IAM roles, IAM role policies. It's smart enough to know that I need an ECS cluster running in, uh, running in Fargate in order to go execute the container. And because I actually built my own Docker container on my machine, it's also going to build me a, an, an ECR repository to put that container to go execute it in ECS. So what I've, what I've got here is effectively um, a great productive development uh, surface on the one hand. So I'm using JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, or Go we also support. Um, but then I get the familiar sort of declarative operations on the management side where I can see what the full resource graph is. I can get rich diffs on that, I, and, and they're actually get like diffs that we, that we sort of offer. Uh, and so I've got management that I'd expect if I'd used other tools, you know, such as you know, Terraform or CloudFormation and, and, and so on and so forth. And so what we think is, you know, as infrastructure becomes increasingly uh, ephemeral over time, and as developers become more opinionated about the infrastructure they're using to build their apps, this is going to help them collaborate with ops and DevOps so that they can stand up a stack in a, a program and an application the way that they want.
want by declaring resources, but they're also taking some accountability for what that, those resources look like at the cloud. Meantime, uh, dev and ops and ops also get the value of understanding what the resource graph looks like and can manage that, manage that appropriately. And where can they go if they want to find out more information about Pulami? Yeah, so it's uh, open source, uh, so you can actually get it by Pulumi.io or Pulumi.com. Uh, follow the route to uh, download, and or uh, brew, install uh, Pulumi will also do the trick. Uh, and then we have a ton of examples on GitHub, there's tons of tutorials for every cloud, including Kubernetes, from serverless to managed services. And uh, go play and let us know how you do. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VMblog. Thanks a lot.